Okay. Anybody alive in this house? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Are we live now? Yes. Hi, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Oak Grove Pentecostal Holiness Church. We're so glad that you joined us today here on our live feed. Our, that's <laughs> Anyway, we are glad you're here. We're glad all of you are here and, uh, and got good news for you. The books came in. Yay! So if you have purchased a book, uh, then you need to see me. And I don't, I, I'm hoping that I've got enough already for everyone that uh, has already said they want one. But if we do run out, it's not a problem. I will get more. And we aren't starting that study until the first Sunday or first Wednesday. I keep saying Sunday. The first Wednesday in March. I believe it's the second, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, so you will have in plenty of time to be able to just kind of read over it a little bit. Don't get too far into it and get ahead of me and then expect to teach the class because I'm not going to let you. So <laughs> just keep that in mind. But we have a lot of needs uh, uh, in the house. We have, uh, you know, several that are sick and several are just still struggling with uh, different things going on. But we know that the Lord is gracious and we know that the Lord answers our prayers and meets our needs. Amen. And so let's pray over the uh, offering and pray over our needs today, and then we will go right in to uh, what the Lord has given me for this evening. Let's pray together. Almighty Father, we thank you for the wonderful day that we've been able to have today. Lord, this is the day that you have made, and we're going to rejoice and be glad in it. We're going to be thankful, God, for everything that you have done for us everything that you are doing for us. Lord, I thank you for the excitement that's in my spirit about revival, about what you're going to do in this revival this weekend. And Lord, we're just believing in the name of Jesus that great and amazing things are going to be happening. Lord, that we, we already know that the enemy is battling. We already know the enemy is trying to stop the move of God. But who shall be able to stop you? No one should be able to stop you. No power, no, no principality, no demon in hell is going to be able to stop your will from coming about. Lord, we thank you for that. I pray, Father, for the offering today that you will bless it many times over and let it be used to win souls to the kingdom. I pray, God, that you'll be with us this evening as we go throughout uh, this word that you've given me tonight. God, I pray that it will be a blessing. I pray, God, that it will be a challenge. I pray, Lord, that it will be something that will stir us in, in our, the very fiber of our being, God. And I glorify you and I praise you. And I give you thanks for all you are. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 God bless you as you give today. Um, do have a couple other announcements other than just revival. Of course, we have uh, our, our regular services as well. Um, tomorrow night is actually, uh, it's tomorrow's Thursday. Tomorrow night is our senior citizen, senior adult, whatever you want to call it, are not as young people fellowship uh, that we have every month. That's going to be tomorrow night at six in the Family Life Center. Please make sure that you come out for that. Uh, Chris and I got a sneak peek at the dessert. Oh my! So anyway, uh, just come out for that, and I know you know, we'll have a great time as we always do. And you might be saying, well, well, pastor, you're so young, you shouldn't be going to that. First of all, thank you. <laughs> Second of all, but I'm the pastor, so I get to go and eat. So God is good. And um, anyway, but when we have, like I said, we have the afterglow on Friday. We have the revival. And then um, something I want to mention. I'm trying to find, and, and I think I found it, but I just have to make sure I can get everything. I'm trying to find an Easter cantata that we can do on Easter morning. And I need singers. I need people who are willing to say, yes, I will come and I will sing and I will be in the Easter Cantata and I will bless people with my talents and my abilities. That's what I need. And you don't even have to say the last part. You can say, and I will sing as loudly as I can till people are turning away from me. That's fine too. We don't mind. We especially need men because men always, they always whip out in these things. <laughs> men never want to get up and sing. They're always like, oh, you can do it. I'm too busy. I'm too manly to sing. No, you're not. Just get up here and sing with us. But if you are interested in being in an Easter cantata, what we will be doing is we, uh, once we get it going, which will be sometime right after the first part of March, um, we're going to be practicing on Sunday nights about 5 o'clock. So you, we can sing. You can work up an appetite and go and eat some dinner. And uh, we just need... I need to see who's going to be interested. I need to see if I'm going to have a nice little ensemble or if it's a trio. Uh -huh. So uh, please let me know if you're interested in doing that. And, um, and it will be a wonderful and marvelous time. All right? All right, everybody's happy and excited. I can tell. <laughs> if you have your Bibles, I want you to turn to the book of Matthew. 
We're actually going to be reading two scriptures out of the book of Matthew, starting with verse, or chapter 5, verse 16. It's something the Lord gave me earlier today. Um, I was going to go in a different route, and then uh, the Lord just kind of sparked this in my spirit. And so I, I believe it's for this church this evening. But Matthew chapter 5, verse 16. And then I'm also going to be reading Matthew chapter 10, verse 39. So Matthew 5, verse 16 says, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Then we turn over to Matthew 10, verse 39. And by the way, we don't have the words on the screen because uh, Ryan and Rochelle are out celebrating Rochelle's, uh, what is she, like 17 now? <laughs> her birthday, I don't know how old she is. But anyway, however old she is, uh, they're out celebrating. So I appreciate you bringing your Bible and let's read it. But uh, Matthew chapter 10, verse 39. He that findeth his life shall lose it. And he that loseth his life for my sake shall find it. Lord, would you just add your anointing to the reading of the word today. Stir our hearts and our minds for the word that you've placed in my heart for this congregation. And I just give you praise and glory and honor for the great privilege to be able to speak to your people tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I want to talk to you for a little bit tonight about be a star. Be a star. I believe it was Andy Warhol that said that in the future, everyone will have 15 minutes of fame. And that is just about right. If you don't believe me, you haven't seen YouTube <laughs> or TikTok or Hickory Dickory Doc or whatever the next one is. I don't know. Um, everybody is video. They're video recording everything. Mm -hmm. Everything. I don't care that you can dance it doesn't matter to me. I don't care that you spilled your milk on the table. I don't need you just to give me a video of that. It doesn't matter to me that your dog can bark. Mine can too. <laughs> so just go in my yard and, and you'll hear it. But, um, but no, everybody wants to be a star. Everybody wants to be famous. Everybody wants to have their, their time in the limelight. You know, we, we've got these things called influencers uh, that have never influenced me for one single thing. But uh, in social media, you've got these people that they have all these people that will follow them on Facebook or Twitter or like I said, TikTok or, or whatever it is, have all these people that will follow them and they'll tell people how to live their lives. And, and they're, they're famous. And I, I, I don't get it, but I'm old. So I, I, I don't get it. There are gamers. There are people who will play video games and they will have, like, they'll, they'll have a uh, a video shot of themselves in the corner and then showing the video game of them playing this video game and they're talking about, hey, oh, oh you know what? I'm going to go over here. I think there might be something over here. And oh, yeah, I was able to get this prize. That's just great. And people are sending them money to play these games. And nobody's sending me any to play Pac Man, but that's okay. <laughs> um, but, you know, I mean, they're, they're famous. I mean, like they're in the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade kind of famous stuff. And everybody wants to be a star. Everybody wants to be famous. If you don't believe me, then why don't you take a look and count, just count the number of quote unquote reality television shows that are on all these different channels. I mean, we've got Real Housewives that ain't really real. You know, we got Real Housewives of this and Real Husbands of that. And we've got, you know, Survivor and we've got, uh, you know, Unsurvivor. And we've got, you know, uh, somebody, uh, Bear Grills or Grills or whatever his name is, and he goes out and does all this stuff. All these reality shows because everybody wants to be famous. Everybody wants attention. Everybody wants to have that attention put on them. And what I want to challenge you today to do is to think about a star. Think about what a star is. According to Lion King, the star is just a giant burning ball of gas. And that's accurate. Uh, Puma says that, and everybody laughs at him, and all that kind of thing. But it, it's a it's a giant ball of gas that's burning, 
and the sun is a star, and you know, we forget that sometimes. So we see its light because it's on fire, because it's burning, and, and it, it gives us heat, it gives us light. Everybody knows what the sun does. It tans us so nicely, except for my legs. It won't tan my legs for anything, but it tans us so nicely in the summer. And, 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 but when we think about what a star is actually doing, and when a star is, is showing that light, and it's giving that energy, and, and all that kind of thing, think about this for a moment. A star is burning and it's burning itself out the sun that we have if we were to go another couple hundred million years or whatever it is which obviously we're not going to the lord's coming back way before that but if if the sun were just to be allowed to do its thing eventually it would run out of fuel and it would, it would just die it'd be a dying star and, you know, you can read about it in astronomy and, and different things you can see about, you know, as far as what, it, what a star does and the life cycle of a star and all these kinds of things. But uh, every star that is shining so brightly, every star that you see in the you know, clear night sky and, and then the sun when it comes up in the morning, it's burning and it's bright. But the fuel for that star to shine is actually the essence of the star itself. It's burning itself out so that we can have life, so that we can have heat, so that we can have that energy. And I, it, it just kind of dawned on me as I was uh, just doing some studying, some thinking today, and some praying today, and, and it just kind of hit me about that, about how we need to be exactly like a star. We need to make it to where we are like a star, where everything that is in us, that is us, is burning away. That the, what we're showing is we're showing light. What we're doing is we're, we're giving that, that positive light and energy, not positive like I'm okay, you're okay kind of thing, but the light of Jesus Christ. Because we, we read in, uh, in the Word where it says, let your light so shine before men. But where we come into the problem is when we've got people in the church or when we've got people in the world that the light they want to shine is focusing on themselves. But if we're really going to be a star for Christ, if we're really going to be a star for God, then we need to understand that the more light that we show, the less of us that still exists. The less of us that there is. That that fire, that light of Jesus Christ that is inside of us is consuming us. It's burning us up. And that's the way it's supposed to be. We are supposed to be showing the light of Jesus Christ. May the Lord forbid that I ever show the world the light of Chris Bamber. I don't want to show the world the light of Chris Bamber, and the world doesn't want to see it. I want to make sure that I'm showing the light of Jesus Christ. And the only way that's going to happen is if I am filled with him. If I am filled with with him that that fuel that will never run out that 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 power that authority that will never fade that will never weaken that will never run out over time but what has to happen is there has to be less of me we read in john chapter 3 verse 30 where john the baptist is saying he must increase but i must decrease and i think probably most of us have heard that that verse before you know as jesus is coming up and he's beginning to start his ministry um, excuse me, John the Baptist says he must increase in John chapter 3 verse 30. He must increase and I must decrease. Think about what he's saying though. He must increase but I must decrease. It's not even a matter where it's not good enough to just say he must increase. That we've got to magnify him. We've got to lift him up. That more people have to hear him. More people have to see him. It's not enough for the church to say, we want to promote God. We want to promote Jesus Christ. We want to magnify his holy name and lift him up. It's not enough that we do that. We also must decrease. And this is not a self-hating thing. This is, this is not something uh, saying, you know, uh, that we need to flog ourselves or we need to punish ourselves because we're horrible, terrible creatures. What it is is this, is that we have to decrease as Christ increases. Why did Jesus have to increase and John have to decrease? Why wasn't it enough for Jesus just to be magnified? The more there is of us, the less there is of him. Every time 
You might say, oh, no, 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 no. I, I've got all of Jesus, everything I've got. It, it, I'm, I'm just full of Jesus. Well, if you're full of Jesus, then you ain't full of you. And if, that, if you don't agree with that, think about if I have a, well, in fact, I've got this bottle of water right here, all right? And you can't see, but the water is just right at the label, all right? There are two things in this water bottle right now. There is water and there is air. Now, if I take some of the water out, there's more of the air. Displacement. You know, we, we have teachers in, in the place, and I'm going to impress them and let them see that I know big words. Uh, if displacement's a big word. I don't know. But like with water displacement, if you have a, a, a glass of water and it's filled to the brim, you got that little bubble at the top and all that sort of thing, and you drop a rock in there, what's going to happen? Some of the water is going to come out because it has been displaced by the mass, by the volume of the rock. And the more rocks that you put in there, the less water that is in that container, right? Okay, so here's the thing. If, if we have our desires and our carnality and we're filled up with that, then where are we putting Jesus? Where is the Holy Spirit? Where is the Holy Ghost when we are full of ourselves and full of making sure that people have focus on us, making sure that we're getting our accolades from people, making sure that people are patting us on the back and saying how great we are. And for every bit of us that is still in us, that's less room for the Holy Spirit to move. The more there is of us, the more of a presence that we give to our carnality. The more that there is of you, of your desires, of you saying, all right, God, I'm going to do this and this and this, but I am not going to go this far. I'm not going to give this up. God, this, it's just something that I want. You know, we don't actually talk to God that way, but our actions speak so much louder than our words. We don't actually speak to God and say, all right, God, here's the deal. Let's, let's negotiate about this. I'm going to give you this and this and this, but... You know, then you you got to let me keep hold on to this because this is what I like. And, and I think that everybody's going to be happy. It's going to be a good negotiation. We don't need to be doing that because the more that there is of us, the more of our carnality that has a presence in our lives. And here's the thing. The more that our carnality has a presence in our lives, the more op opportunity and the more possibility that we are going to make decisions based on the carnality and not on the Holy Spirit. If you are full of yourself, if you are full of your flesh, if you're full of your desires, and you're not looking at the desires of God, you're not looking at what the Holy Spirit is telling you to do, then the decisions you make are going to be based on your desires, not on what He wants. Many people that have a hard time giving in, in an offering, uh, giving time or giving an offering or, or whatever it may be, you know, giving towards missions or, or whatever. A lot of people that have a hard time with that it's because of the fact that they're not wanting to give that up. They're not wanting to give up that money because that can do something for them. Well, I, I don't want to give all my money away, you know, because I still need some for bills and go to the beach and this and that, you know, all these kinds of things. You know, people that are full of the Holy Spirit, people that are, are full of God and are saying, God, whatever you desire, that's what I desire. Lord, would you set the desires in my heart? People that are like that, they usually don't have a problem with giving. Because they're thinking, the Lord gave it to me, and if he wants it back, he can have it. Amen. And so they give freely, and then God blesses them freely. People that will, uh, you know, that they, they will come to church, and, and maybe they'll just play the game, and, and they won't actually be involved and, and be worshiping and praising God. You know, they're, they're too busy checking their phone, or they're too busy, you know, wondering why somebody parked in their place, or they're wondering why it isn't some, some, this new couple is sitting in my seat, or whatever it may be. They're, you can't tell me that they're full of the Holy Spirit and His wants and His desires and what He desires for us in our lives. They have enough carnality in them that they're letting their carnality make decisions for them. The more that there is of us in us, the more of a presence that we give to our carnality. And the less there is of us, the less presence we give to the flesh. Amen. How many times have you made the decision that was made in the flesh and you were so sorry you ended up making that decision? How many times? Have you made a statement because you were mad because you wanted to let them know what you thought? Oh, no, no, no. You're not going to say that to me. Let me tell you what I'm going to say to you because that sounds like Jesus, right? That sounds like the way the Holy Spirit works in us. Blessed are they 
to get back to the people who have hurt them. For they shall be the victors, and we shall call them Karen. <laughs> I mean, think about it. How many times have you... Yeah, and and I, mean, I, I get on myself all the time about road rage. In fact, not only do I get on myself about road rage, my wife gets on to me about road rage. God bless her. And, you know, and I, I get so angry, and I try my best, and I, and I, I, I just have to... I apologize and I ask God for forgiveness. And I'll admit, there's there's at least enough carnality in me. It may just be like about as big as a cocoa puff, and it's in there, but it's called road rage. And it shows up every now and again. And I, I just want to, you know, I want to let people know Jesus doesn't love you. But of course he does, but I want to tell them that, you know, or, or he loves you, but he doesn't care for you very much. You know, kind of like he, he loves you, but he doesn't like you, you know, kind of thing. But the more that we have, though, of the flesh, then the less of his light that's shining. Because the light that we shine, even though it says, let your light so shine before men, it's not talking about your carnality. It's not talking about your flesh. It's not talking about your sinner self. It's talking about, I have saved you. I have redeemed you. You are mine now. You belong to me. Let your light now shine before men. The light that we shine to this world should be the light of Jesus Christ. There should be no question when people see us in our everyday lives. I'm not talking about just when you come into church and you know when you have a suit on or, or you, know, you look churchy uh, because I wear suits and ties most of the time when I preach I hear all the time uh, when I walk into restaurants I hear people talk about oh, there's a preacher and I'm like well at least they recognize the clothes you know that sort of thing uh, they haven't heard me yet but at least they recognize the clothes but but you know it, and I'm sorry I started going down the rabbit trail I'm gonna back up just a moment let me back up because I just I, I was getting all mad about the road rage again <laughs> Because I began to think about, I'll be honest, I began to think about somebody that made me mad not that long ago. <laughs> and I was thinking about how I needed to ask forgiveness. <laughs> but it's not your clothing and it's not your, your parking spot. It's not even your position in the church that is the light that you're supposed to be shining. Right. It's who has changed you. Yeah. It's who has redeemed you. It's who has made you a new creature. It's who has made you more than a conqueror. It's it's the one that has redeemed you and has saved you and has brought you out of the darkness into his marvelous light. That's the light that we're supposed to be showing. And the only way we can do that is we, if we allow his fire to burn inside of us. But the more that there is of us, the less of the world is going to see of God. The more that there is of you and who you are, and you might be a wonderful person. I think most of you are. See, a couple of you caught that. I said most of you, not all of you. No, no, I'm kidding. All of you are. You're all wonderful. So, um, no, but you, you may be a great person. You may be wonderful. You may be giving and loving and all this kind of thing. But if you are still carnal, then you're not showing the light that Christ has called you to show. Amen. Because you're not showing Him. You're not showing Him. Why do we have so many places where Churches are splitting because somebody in the church, probably several somebodies, have not allowed the fire of the Holy Spirit to consume them. And there's still too much flesh and too much carnality. Amen. When you get a church that ends up splitting, we knew of a church that we had actually attended at one point, not when this all this happened, but we were attending at one point. And they had a problem with uh, half the church loved the pastor and half the church hated him. And it just about got to a fist fight. I mean, people are like walking across the aisle because, you know, of course, had had two like this. We had the pros and the cons kind of thing. And there were people walking across the aisle to go tell somebody what they thought of them, lay hands on them suddenly without praying. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, they, in a sanctuary, they were doing this. To the point where there were people that just had to get up and say, I, I've got to get my children out of here because I, I can't have them seeing this. Wow. Can you honestly tell me in that situation that every single person in those pews, that even though their, member, their name was on the membership roll, that even though they taught Sunday school, that even though they were on the praise team, that even though they worked in the sound or they worked in the media or they, or they did whatever it was that they did, can you honestly tell me that those people did not have too much of their carnality, too much of their flesh? Because can you really say that if they were full of the Holy Spirit and that the Holy Spirit had consumed all of that dross, had consumed all that waste, and instead had replaced it with Him, do you really think that's what would have happened? 
We've got churches that they, they struggle because we've got this family doesn't like that family. Or this group doesn't like that group. This clique doesn't like that clique. You know, I mean, this whole church is family just about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One big click. Never heard of double first cousins in my life until I came to this church. God bless America. But, <laughs> but it's all right. It's all right. But the thing is, even family will fight, right? Yeah, I'm going to leave that alone. Hmm. We're, we're getting ready to go into revival. Some of you may be saying, oh, Pastor, I wish you'd just shut up about revival already. Well, come and get saved, and then maybe I'll shut up about it. We're getting ready to have revival services. I truly believe, and I, I can say this, at least in my heart, at least in my spirit, I can tell you that revival has already begun. Amen. I pray it's been doing that in yours. That's what I've been wanting for you. That's what I've been praying for you. I've been praying that, that the spirit of revival would be in this place even before the very first note was sung, before the very first time the door was open for the revival meeting. It's going to be a wonderful time. The Lord laid this on my heart back last summer to, to schedule this revival. So I know that God has a purpose for yeah. it. And I know that those that are going to be here are going to be blessed. And I know that those that are going to be here are going to be appointed to be here because God has got something for you. That's right. Mm -hmm. I know that already. And the only way we're going to see revival really take hold, really just I need mean, a hold of us to where we are talking about it for years to come. He says, we say, Father, will you just burn everything out that's me? And let the light that shines, let it all be you. God, there may be somebody that may, be, may offend me. It's okay. Because you love them anyway, and I'm going to love them too. I may not like what they said, but I love who their Savior is. And I want them to be right with God. I want them to be saved. And I will only show your light to them. Lord, there may be somebody that gets on my last nerve. Because <laughs> I don't like the way that they sing. <laughs> or I don't like the way they pray. Or I don't like the way that they preach too long. <laughs> or I don't like the way that they dress. Or they got too many tattoos. Or they ain't got enough tattoos. Or whatever it is. We're not going to see revival. We're focusing on those kinds of things. But instead, what we need to say is, Lord, I don't, I don't even care who else is around me because they're all my brothers and sisters in Christ. And if they don't know you, I want them to become a brother or sister in Christ. God, can we have a revival where you just transform my thoughts and my feelings and my desires and everything that I am and replace it with you? God, I want to burn bright. I want my light to so shine before men that when people see me, they don't have to ask me if I'm a Christian. They assume that I am. And not because they saw me walking out of the church and not because I walked into uh, Cinco de Mayo wearing a suit on a Sunday, but they can tell by my spirit. They can tell by my demeanor. They can see on my face. This person knows Jesus Christ. This person is a Christian. This person has something that the rest of us don't. God, would you just put that in me and not for my glory, but that all the glory can be yours. If we can get in that kind of a mindset, if we can get in that kind of a place where we are stars that are burning not for our own use, but for the but for the benefit and for the glory of God, if we can get to that place, revival will take hold. It will take hold. It won't just be, oh, that was such a great time. Oh, and now we're just back to normal. I don't ever want to go back to normal. Amen. I don't ever want to go back to we're getting by. I don't ever want to go back to, oh, that was a lovely service. <laughs> that, was, that was nice. I want it to be every time we come together. That God just rocks our world. Yeah. Yes. Amen. I want it to be that every time we come together, that, that, that when we're not having church on Friday nights, you know, or Saturdays or whatever, you know, that we're anticipating what's going to happen on Sunday morning. Amen. I want it to be the place where we as a church body, and, and not even just so broke, but every church, but I've got to start with us. I've got to start with my own people. I want it to be the where when, when we think about church, when we when we think about the fact we've got to go to service, we're not rolling our eyes or going, oh, that means I've got to iron. <laughs> or, oh, that means I've got to make my husband iron. 
I don't want it to be to where, uh, well, let's take a look at the weather out first. Uh, those clouds don't look real good. I think I'm going to get wet. I can't be getting my, my new clothes wet. But I don't want to wear my old clothes because I don't want to look like a hobo in church. Maybe I should just get online and watch it online. It'll be fine. I don't want it to be, I'll just be honest with you, I don't want it to be, and I'm thankful for our online feed. I really am. But I don't want it to be where people prefer to watch online than to be in the presence oh, amen. of God. That's right. And unfortunately, the church universal has gotten to that point. Mm-hmm. It's nicer to watch the preaching, sit in your PJs. Actually, you're not in your PJs. You got dressed, but just enough to go down and get yourself a Starbucks. You know, you could run down the, to Bojangles and get yourself a, a chicken biscuit or something. I can do that, but I can't quite make it all the way to church. But I can get prepared for church. I can go ahead and I can get breakfast. All right. I know you might think, preacher, you're meddling. Yeah. I want revival to stick. I want revival to not be the exception, but to be the norm. Amen. I want it to be. We've got a spam call coming in and a vibration <laughs> coming on my phone. At least it didn't rain. Stand on rebuke you in the name of Jesus. All right. <laughs> I want it to be where we have these services. And we're saying, God, I need more. I mean, you, you filled me by overflowing, but God, I need more. God, I, I can't wait to get back to church. I can't wait to get back in fellowship with my brothers and sisters in Christ. I can't wait to be in the altars praying for people or having people pray for me. I can't wait to just sense the move of the Holy Spirit once again in my life. God, would you just get me back to church, please? Would you get me back to the altar? Would you get me back to that place where I'm in your spirit? Because if we can get to that place, then we're going to be showing our light. We're going to be that star that shines and dispels the darkness. We're going to be that star, the star that shining in the midst of a dark and sinful world and they're only going to see Jesus Christ. Amen. They're only going to see the Holy Spirit. They're only going to see the answer that they don't even know they're looking for. Amen. I want to ask you to stand if you would. I know that on Wednesdays I'm supposed to teach but I'll get back to that sometime. We got the series coming up in March. I'll be teaching. You'll get your field of teaching. What I want us to do is I, I want us to take some time. We, we've got time. I, we got plenty of time. I want us to take some time. I, I've been talking about prayer and listening. In case you haven't figured it out, your pastor believes in the power of prayer. In case you haven't figured it out, your pastor loves to pray. Not only loves to pray, but loves it when other people pray. Because it seems like that when we all get together and we pray, then we begin to move the heavens. Right. Then we begin to touch God. Then we get to the throne room. Then we begin to see the miracles happen. Then we begin to, to see the restoration take place. Then we begin to feel the infilling of the Holy Spirit. And we get to experience that power and that glory and that honor for ourselves. It's when we pray. When we pray. There's a, a song that we used to sing. It says, when we pray, the doors of heaven will open. The Father is moved when words of faith are spoken. And then it says, all of heaven stands at attention when the name of Jesus is mentioned. Amen. And he hears every word when we pray. Every word we say when we pray. I want us to pray. And if you want to come to the altars, you can. If you want to stay at your seats, you can. When we have our prayer nights on, on, on Monday nights when we have prayer, you know, we, we'll do some prayer requests and then we just pray. We're not waiting for some big theme. We're not waiting for, well, the preacher's going to line us all up and do a Holy Ghost car wash and as we're walking through, he's going to smack us in the head with the oil. You know, we're not going to, uh, we don't do anything like that. We just pray. Because I'll tell you, the people that will pray, 
they're going to be heard. A people that pray will be heard. A people that pray, not just ask, not just wish, not just beg, not just plead, Lord, would you do this, would you do that, would you do this, amen. And then God's sitting there going, well, I want to talk to you too. And you just walk away. Not that. People that seek God. If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. So what I would like for us to do, and you, know, you pray as long as you want to pray. Um, you might only pray two, three minutes. That's fine. You might pray for the next 10, 15 minutes. Wonderful. Um, if you pray for the next six or seven hours, I hope you have a key because I'm going home. But uh, now I, just, I want you to pray. And I want us to begin. You know, I've been saying we need to pray for revival. And I mean, we've been doing that. We're going to continue to do that. And we're going to even continue to do that after the revival meetings are over. Lord, would you just continue to send revival? But what I want you to pray is that God will prepare you for revival. That God will prepare you for revival because if we just say, all right, I'm not going to do anything, I'm not going to prepare, I'm not going to say anything, I'm not going to get my, my heart right, I'm not going to get my spirit right, I'm not going to get my mind right, I'm just going to go to revival. Okay, God, lay it on me. Brother Charles was talking about it Monday at prayer and he said, we get this attitude of bless me if you can. Hmm. I want us to be prepared for what God wants to do. So if we can just pray, and like I said, you can sit where you are, you can stand, you can come to the altar, you can, whatever it is you want to do. If you, if you say, well, I'm not in the mood to pray, okay, that's up to you. I mean, you can leave and, and you know, have yourself a great evening, we love you. But, but if, if, you're, if you'll take some time to pray, and I want you to just begin to pray, God, I want your light to shine through me. God, I want to be the star that, that, that Pastor Chris is talking about. I want to be that star, but it's got to be your light. It's got to be your light that's shining on mankind. It's got to be your light that's shining in my community. It's got to be your light that's bringing, uh, that you're bringing that light to a lost and dying world. And if you'll begin to pray this with me, if you'll begin to pray and just really do some introspection and really say, God, would you prepare me for revival? I believe that the Lord's going to do it. Amen. Amen. Just begin to pray.